What's up divers? We've thrown a lot of shade, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. Split fins versus regular fins. Let's get to it. Thanks for joining me here on our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah. And like I said, we're finally, finally gonna talk in depth about split fins and regular blade fins. But before we get into it, our sponsor for today's video is Eco Roots. We decided to put their wooden hairbrush to the test against Itor's fierce mane. Watch through to the end of the video to find out how it went. Let's get back to the lesson. If you've already watched our video about accidents where Itor and I analyze and give solutions to diving accidents that have been posted here on YouTube, then you've probably heard a little bit about how much we don't like split fins. If you haven't seen those videos, make sure you go and check those out. I'm gonna link those up in the description below. They're really helpful just to understand how accidents happen and how to avoid them for yourself. But basically, I wanna come here with an open mind. <laughs> I'm just here to provide some information and a perspective. Regardless of what anyone says about split fins, they are still widely used all over the world. So it's worth looking into and understanding. Let's talk about the benefits of split fins. The idea behind them is is actually quite smart. The idea was to design them so that they would work like a fish fin. The split down the center basically reduces drag. And when you move your fins, especially in the straight leg flutter kick, it's designed to create a vortex which helps to propel you forward. The movement that the water has around the fins, it's good for consistent speed and overall less effort exerted by the diver. These fins are also typically very light and flexible. And because of that, certain people really benefit from using split fins. That would be beginner divers, especially if you happen to have weak ankles or weak knees. These can be really easy on your joints and result in fewer cramps. Like I said, especially for those just beginning who maybe don't have the strong calf muscles. Oh yeah. These fins are appropriate for simple dive sites, especially ones that don't have a lot of silts along the bottom, and for places that don't have a lot of current or surge. One more good thing about split fins is that if they are used in the proper environment and you're swimming calmly, they actually can improve your air consumption. The reason for that is that there's less drag on this type of fin. The way that it's designed with that split and the vortex, it means that water can move easily through the fin and therefore not get you caught up or slow you down. If your dive plan is just to go into some calm water, swim around for a bit, you won't have any problems with split fins. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Now, places where you can have trouble with split fins. As you've probably already guessed, current is a big no-no for split fins. They really don't pack the punch to be able to fight against a strong current, and they're really not good for load-bearing activities. So for those of you that are gonna go on to the rescue course, dive master instructor, it's really best not to have split fins because doing a rescue tow is really challenging with these kinds of fins. They just don't give you the force that you need for that level of activity. Activity. Split fins also tend to be less precise. That means if you really want to do intricate movements, different kinds of frog kicking, helicopter kicking, back finning, that's going to be a real challenge for you in split fins. That means they're really not designed for technical diving, cave diving, wreck diving, anything that requires precise movement. Another interesting thing is that split fins can actually get out kicked. That means that they're most efficient at a kind of calm, normal pace, which is why when somebody tries to get themselves out of a current, they really have a hard time because they're kicking much faster, right? The velocity of their flutter kick is higher. So that means that the water movement between that split, the vortex gets thrown off and you just don't have the water. You're not pushing. You're not pushing yourself forward. Uh... Okay, let's move into our favorite option, which is the regular fin, the blade 
fin. The benefits of using regular fins are basically all of the cons from the split fins. So that means that they are great for load bearing activities, tired diver toes. You can move really precisely in the water. So any kind of helicopter kicks, back finning, anything, you're going to be able to get exactly where you want to be in the water. The negative side of using blade style fins, there is drag when using them. So that means that it can affect your air consumption. But if you are diving in a place where the benefits outweigh the cons, taking the tiny hit on air consumption is really, it's not even a question. Because these fins are a little bit more stiff and you do have to work a bit harder to move them around, there is a higher chance of getting cramps, but this is all part of the training of becoming a scuba diver because once you get a handful of dives in, you build up the muscles that you need and you really stop getting cramps unless you happen to be like nutrient deficient. I don't know, eat a banana. <laughs> So our personal opinion, we would never recommend anyone buy split fins, but from my point of view, because I'm not ITOR, I don't hate on people that show up to a dive site with split fins. I would be happy if people hate me for hating split fins. Ahora, ahora, ahora. Ahora, espera, espera, espera. Some people love them, and if they work for you, then awesome. The only thing I care about is that you go diving. Now, the face-off with our sponsor, EcoRoots. Itor, the curly-haired caveman versus the handmade wooden hairbrush with compostable bamboo brush pins. Who will win? EcoRoots is a U.S.-based, environmentally conscious, and minimalist brand focused on low-waste products for a better you. We've moved away from single-use plastics in our lives, and EcoRoots is the brand we trust for sustainable, compostable, cruelty-free necessities. And we're talking about high-quality goods here. This hairbrush crushed our expectations. It's tough and durable, all while being gentle. We're obsessed with all their products, plus no plastic shipping materials. Use the link in the description below and code ASUL Unlimited for a discount. Vote with your dollars. Let's clean up the planet together. You can smile if you want. <laughs> All right, that does it for me today. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a big old thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. <laughs> okay, brush your hair like a normal human being. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uy, que no me